Parental discretion is advised. This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about the best of the Attitude Era, the worst of all wrestling gimmicks, and what's life like under the WWE Network. Stick around. Get your indie fix at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Get 20% off any digital downloads with the coupon code HEAD, including our latest release, IWC A New Era, featuring Al Snow and Luke Doc Gallows of TNA and WWE. Want to support the show directly? Donate as little as a dollar an episode to get your name in the show with more benefits on the way. Check out our page at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertise. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show 410. It's Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to rock it here. We got a hell of a crew with us today. First of all, let's just bring it up. And he, uh, for the Riz joins us. Hi. Hi. Hi, Sorg. How you doing? Welcome to the first half of the show again. We're going to talk wrestling. We are going to talk wrestling, good sir. Hey, you know where we are going to talk wrestling? Where? On the internet? On the kind of radio. On the kind of radio? No, that thing isn't on there yet. That's the other show. No, that's the other no, show. No, that's the other show. Yeah. That's yeah. the other show. No, we'll get, okay, to, that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to uh, that. We'll get to that part. Also with us is DJ Lunchbox. Papa Lunchbox. Papa Lunchbox, be happy. This is bullshit. We are not going to talk wrestling. I refuse to talk about wrestling on the wrestling. You will Mayhem talk show about wrestling on the radio. Show. Otherwise, okay. All right. Let's talk about wrestling. Yes. Um, All right. And also back oh, yeah, with dude. us from the Carolinas is Bo Diggity. Woo! I I returned because I asked. Yes. Really. Uh, so Sorg apparently has missed all of the times in the wrap of things where I said, Hey Sorg, can I be on the show the next night? Every time he's apparently just completely missed that part. So um yeah, I don't know what happened, but I, I'm now on the show again and uh everything's great. You gotta call my people, man. You gotta call my people or just it's, leave a really blatant voicemail. Apparently. I, yeah, Sorg, I did. I did leave a really blatant super, voicemail. super blatant um Get me the fuck back on the show uh, voicemail. That's what happened. The yeah. only change that came about from uh, Occupy Mayhem was that we got Bo Diggity back on the show. There you go. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good solid change. Congratulations, that, Hijack Mayhem. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Offered. Yep, yep. So so now now he's on the show, but he needs to beat DJ Lunchbox in order to get to the second half of the show. Ooh. Oh, snap. Mm-hmm. I will fight you to the... I will fight you till I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> now, are fight you saying you fight no. or bite? Because I'm only on board for one of those. Mm, all right, we'll, hey. get, we'll get into that later. Of course, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find out more at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. What's going on over there? Um, where's my notes at? Uh, of course, thanks, Basic Sickness, for our intro song, BasicSickness.com. If you want to check out his stuff for free download. He's got a brand new music video that uh, we actually tweeted out earlier. <laughs> There's tape involved right now. Um, we'll no, get to no, that, too. I have to edit, um, I have to edit myself. It's like a <laughs> 92 MTV video um, over here. I'm sorry. Uh, good times. Oh my God. Email us at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or drop us a line at 412 406. I'm sorry, 206 412 206 WMS0 uh, at mayhem show don't on the Twitter. What we're saying, we're just saying don't call. We're us. wrestling mayhem show on Facebook, on Google Plus, and of course, the great Facebook group. There's like a ton of you guys joining every week. I love it. Plenty of new faces, lots of conversation, and the funny pictures from Riz. Um, You're welcome. And also, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, other places, I'm sure. Um, Flip TV, Roku devices, that kind of stuff. Uh, quick note, we may not be... If you're getting us video um, on iTunes, you may not be doing that very soon as they're uh, ending that support on Blip TV. We're trying to, trying to see about a solution, but I don't think there are a lot of people uh, involved in that. So we're, we're uh, in the meantime, we are on YouTube. So I think that's going to be the go-to place for video people with video these days. And of course, you can join us live every Tuesday night at WrestlingMayhemShow.com at 
9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and we got links up there and everything say, say right here for the Sorgatron Media live stream for everything that we do. And of course, um, big thanks to our Patreon person. Um, Re WrestlingRevolution.net has been so supporting us with two dollars a show. Uh, for as low as a dollar, you will get some WMS gold. All that stuff we recorded. We used to put in the app. We're putting in the app if you bought that, or you still want to buy that on the Amazon App Store for Android or an iOS App Store. But now you can also contribute as little as a dollar an episode for the Patreon. If you enjoy the show, you love the value of the show, want to chip in just a little bit. Um, you can do that. You can do a penny. You can do five cents if you really wanted to, just to put something in for the show. If you guys if you guys do that, we can do a lot to do a lot bigger and better things. And maybe bring more shows. Because we've been doing that lately. Laundry time. A laundry time. Yeah, laundry time mayhem time show. show. There you go. But I mean, we do have a lot. We've been doing the wrap-ups. We're doing the after shows. We got the indie mayhem show. We have a lot of content out there, guys. Sometimes live readings of fan fiction. Mm -hmm. That happens. Yep. That, that happens. has happened. Of course. Uh, I apologize in advance if you're offended by d uh, graphic depictions of the genitalia of professional wrestlers, but you know, them's the breaks. I still I don't apologize during Antonio Cesaro matches a little bit after listening to that. A little, little weirded out uh, yep. by that. Um, so let's get into it. Well, of course, if you want to support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Forgot to end that part. And we got a link over there at wrestling mayhem show.com if you want to check that out as well. Um, now let's get right into it. The only way we know how with the fan mail first let's go dibs ahead with the what dibs on dustin's if you want sure dibs do it get my, do it get ready for this one. do it <clears throat> i've been waiting for dear, this week dear mayhem nation sup it is official there has been quite the debate going on for some time now al gore lied when he said it was him Chris Jericho simply fabricated the fabricated, not fabricated, like fabricated, fabricated the truth fabricated. due to his envy. Hmm. And on Sunday, no one can argue who the true inventor of the internet really is. That award goes to Ethanol Carter the third. I didn't realize his full name was Ethanol, but sure. <laughs> on this on this exact same day, in the exact same five minutes, and in the exact same sentence, it was also made official that EC3 won the internet as well. Check his mm -hmm. Wikipedia page to see that these claims became validated this past Sunday. What? Do, do we have the Wikipedia page here? No, I, I guess I'll, I'll look, it up. look it up. It's, we got to now look. Hold on. We got to pause this email to look up. Um, I hope this is really uh, easy to find, or else this is going to be a very awkward uh, situation. Yeah, I hope we find something. Oh, no. I really do. I mean, let's see here. <clears throat> mm. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm going to, but I realize it's on the wrong computer here. What's the story, Wishbone? Find it on. I don't see anything very slow. Internet's being one. Continue with the email. Carry on. I do see here, though, that he participates in Zumba. Oh, continuing. Good questions. Knowing that logic does not apply in this realm. What was your reaction to Bully Ray helping MVP gain control of wrestling operations? Fucking sucked. That was weird. That was weird. I watched it today, like kind of in the background a little bit, but I still watched it. Um, I didn't get that at all. I, other than he screwed over Dixie Carter, which kind of made it make sense. I guess. I was shocked because I thought Bully Ray hated black people. No. Oh. 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 Yeah, I thought Are that was kind of the case surprised. there, but uh, I'm on the fence because I know this was a face move, but it could have just as easily been Bully saying, fuck you to Dixie and Rude. Plus, it sets up an interesting match at Sacrifice between the two. That's Dustin's opinion. My opinion. Didn't watch it. I, oh, I take that back. I was going to watch Sacrifice, and then I didn't. You mean Lockdown? Up in, or Lockdown. That's right. Sacrifice is the next one. Lockdown. I didn't watch Lockdown, except for the very, very, very end after they had already won. And then I see Bully in there, and I'm like, what the, what? And then I see, like, Dixie getting mad, and then uh, Rue gets powerbombed through a table, and I went, oh, something must have happened there. All it right, was, then. It was the fitting ending to a clusterfuck of a match. It was. Yeah. It, I, it, it was, and I, like I said on the after show, it was Vince Russo 
all over your face. It does seem like it does seem like it's a, Russo sticky. I, I think you guys were talking about the war games and how it was two rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, maybe at the after show on lockdown. Um, yeah, it, it, there's just two, eight people in there trying to pull stuff off. It does seem like a cluster. Um, and and by almost... the way, they took away that uh, that he won the world. So what? Oh, he won the internet. They, they took that. Internet. Oh, okay. Hey, I imagine um, that wouldn't stay up for too can long. Can I? Can I sidebar here real quick? Okay. Is Vince Russo just the Michael Bay of wrestling? <laughs> Kind of, isn't he? Where he yeah. just like he doesn't have any sort of real plots. He just goes for the big like explosions and stuff. Pretty much. He's just no, like, he's and, then like and then this guy comes in and he goes, and then this other guy comes in and he goes, and then these guys come no, in and they're no. like, what are you doing? That's no, Vince he's Russo. The M. Night it's a twist. M. Night Shyamalan twists. There you go. Because he had one great twist with Hulk Hogan joining the NWO. No. No, no, that wasn't him. Mm-mm. That wasn't him. No, Mm-mm. he was in WWE Shit. at the time. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh. Yeah, he he's the and guy. They tried who's... to be what they were, what they wanted to have, and that shock value. And they tried to do that again and again and again and again, and it just didn't work. Yeah, because South Park has been saying shit on television for the last like eight years. You can't you can't just say shit on television and go oh, and clutch your pearls. It doesn't work anymore. So, no. sorry Vince, you got to come up with something better than saying shit on television. Mm-hmm. Um, with the Andre Cup Battle Royal, I didn't realize this was for Andre the Giant's Cup, but sure. Uh, the Andre Cup Battle Royal taking place at Mania as a way to get as many people on the car as possible. I have a two part question. Who would you like to see participate in this match? And if you had to pick right now, who is your money on to win Andre's Cup? So I guess you just win Andre the Giant's just giant sweaty cup, mm-hmm. I guess. Sure. I okay. I don't think it's sweaty anymore. It's probably dried. You know what? Yeah, I, have I, have a, I have a really strong feeling that, the, uh, that, that Andre the Giant's cup sweat is everlasting. <laughs> it's just there forever. It's no like matter where you water, are, it's always moist. Yes, mm-hmm. it's like it's like water from a stone. So, what was the first part of the question? Uh, who is your money? Who would you like to see in the match, and who is your money on to win it? Great, Collie. Well, of course. Uh, my uh, answer sword. to both questions are the same, and uh, I say Biggie Langston. Uh, unfortunately, I think they're going to go. I think, like, I feel like this is a John Cena. Yeah, John Cena is going to win that match. Obviously, I feel like Big Show gets this. I is he like, in there? I he probably will be eventually. I mean, is um, John Cena in like, the Like, it seems like the obvious thing. John apparently Cena's not anymore. Um, he said he was in. Then he, he said, said he was wasn't. In. Then he went. Wait a minute. Yeah. Then he said, "Well, Crazy wait, no, guy. I actually have a match." Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I again, I, I'd love to see like a Biggie or somebody do it and um i could see if they're not involved in anything else or roman reigns i mean after the showing at royal rumble but i'd like to see him oh would you know be like cesaro or biggie to give them that kind of big kind of push for it so yeah isn't it more i think this is more along the lines of hey you have done so much for wrestling so here's a gigantic trophy i hope that whoever i kind of want to heal to win it I don't know who, but I want a heel to win it, and I want them to carry it to every match they have. And I want this trophy to be so enormous, just so <laughs> ridiculous, that like it's have, like, oh, here it comes Rio with this enormous it. trophy. Kind of like uh, uh, Crash Holly with the scale. I can see that in that, that case, I can see Cesaro doing it. I can, you just see Cesaro winning it, and then you see um, Dutch carrying out around this giant trophy. I want it to be Dutch-sized. <laughs> I wanted to be the size of yes. Dutch Mantel, and he's just carrying around this giant trophy, like Cesaro America. Let's be honest, real Americans win in the long run. Like El Torito is going to win this thing. Yeah, in the Santino's in real life, something it. stupid like that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, Hornswoggle. Exactly. All right. The ending of the Magnus Samoa Joe match reminded me a lot of the Attitude Era, just not of the any, just not any of the good parts. What is something from that era you wished had never gone away? I'll go with um, the Attitude Era was really made by the fact that you had two competing shows going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you effectively had four hours of wrestling 
Didn't Nitro start at eight? I want to say yeah. Nitro started yeah. at eight. And then Raw started at nine. So you always got one hour on each side of just that that program. And so then, you either got like the first hour of Nitro and the last hour of Raw. And eventually Nitro went three hours. Yes. So Nitro so did go three hours at one point. Went away was um, WCW. Wait, what's that? That was a poor move. What's that, LB? So the thing that you wish had never gone away was WCW. Yeah, I wish the WCW had never gone away. My, oh, by the way, the first thing I watched, I finally <laughs> watched something on the WWE Network that wasn't like the pre or post show. Uh, it was a Dean Malenko and Rey Mysterio in a match at Halloween Havoc 96. And it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I enjoyed a Rey Mysterio match for the first time in 15 years. Mm-hmm. That was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chachi actually, first time in 15 years, and it was in 1996. Ch- Chachi was asking me what, yeah. what pay-per-view he should watch. And I was like, how about WCW Hogwild? Um, because oh, that is always no. one of my favorites. And I knew I knew off the bat, I was like, there is a really good Rey Mysterio match. All the Cruiser really, uh, matches on that is going to be interesting. And and he said, yes, Rey Mysterio Ultimate, Ultimate Dragon was uh, a pretty good flippy match. Um, and I think he enjoyed some of the other stuff. Like the bikers scaring uh, Harlem Heat with their bikes. <laughs> right, revving them during the match against yeah. the Steiners or something. I, I th- yeah, I, I just the fact that there was actual competition. Yeah, yeah, which means that both of them had to step it up and do. I don't want to say that they had to like make things crazier and crazier, but they had to because the the wrestling during they the attitude there wasn't great compared to what it is now. Mm-hmm. But and it, the of- fact that the that they had to continually one up each other, which was exactly really awesome. Um, and, That's what it was. And uh, Eamon brings up in the chat room uh, risk taking as far as talent goes. But I also want to point out here. I, I think he's the, old, the same one who who pointed out the um, original Bad News Barrett was this guy that lowered from this platform uh, from the top, uh, like on Raw uh, that I've never seen before. I've absolutely <coughs> never seen this clip what before. Is, what? They, what? Don't, you'll yeah, have to look at the Facebook really group fast. for that. He, did he? I didn't, I didn't remember him being there. It must have been when I was in my blackout for WWF. Um, I got rid of all but, kinds of problems. But I think they, yeah, they took a lot of risks. But I think there are a lot of misses, like more misses than we see even today in NXT uh, when it comes oh, yeah. to something like that. Because they were, they were, it did feel like attitude. They were trying everything. Mm-hmm. At the time, remember we did get a yo. Know, I was reminded of this because I watched a a uh, interview of Goldust uh, between the stuff on WWE Network and like the period when he was like the mentally uh, had a problem and had was into the bondage with Luna Vachon kind of thing. Like they were the throwing every unit. as Goldust. Yeah, exactly. Um, there was a lot of misses. As far as what I miss, I think the part of it that I miss is the rabid rabid fans which i think we're really getting yeah. back with the daniel bryan situations lately yeah that like if you go back and watch old attitude era stuff mm-hmm. these people are ready to rip seats out of the arena yeah the and crowd, lo- throw them the crowd is ready nuts to, they're ready to riot at any moment the amount of signs that are out there and and people just you know expect Floating when you hear the glass break when something happens. I mean, it is just a whole different show. It feels like it feels like the metal concert versus a a uh, a, uh, a country like sit a down concert, concert. You know, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it like, feels like it almost feels like this is this concert you're afraid to go to because there might be a mosh pit. Yep. To me, so they, like if you yeah, you're right. The glass break, the mm-hmm. Austin glass break. <laughs> It's like, where did all that noise come from? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, more, uh, anybody else need to answer there? Uh, yeah, yeah. We we have uh, we have other things to answer here. Hold on. Allow me to. No, no. I, 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 I did ever get to turn at that question, Riz? Uh, um, I, think so. I don't know. What was the question? The attitude error. What, you, what do you? What miss do you miss it? about the attitude error? Oh, what did I miss about the attitude error? Fucking naked Midian. <laughs> you can correct the naked Midian. Uh, but no, the, always, the one, always comes up. Like one thing I remember besides you know the abnormal levels of bloodshed was really abnormal. The, the abnormal, the abnormal amounts of bloodshed uh, was. Like Sorg said, the, the amazing, the weird characters that tried to be something in WWE and then failed 
hard. And it was to the point where they had to just go over there and try to change as much as they can from where they were. And some of them failed miserably and some of them strived on that and became big. Like Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He was a Mm -hmm. blue blood. He talked in like in English, like in in seventeenth seventeenth century English. Properly proper proper English. English. The Queen's English, sir. And then he joined with DX and then he started becoming Triple H and then he ditched the the proper English and then you have Triple H as he is now, which is a gigantic douchebag. But it, it all started with him changing his character to fit the Attitude Era. And that's what they did. That's what they needed to do to su- succeed in that era. Boop. Lunchbox, what do you got? Lunchbox. Um, <clears throat> uh, a couple Lunchbox. of things. Um, I uh, this one's. Uh, I, I let me start by saying I uh, I have nothing but respect for all the wrestlers, and I want them to live long and healthy lives. But uh, uh, ECW was something that got me back into wrestling, so I kind of miss that uh, that crazy ass violence. I totally understand why it's not feasible anymore, and I'm I, I'm pretty glad why it's not feasible anymore. And those were fucking crazy times to watch wrestling. Um, and the other thing was there was I, I feel like in the attitude era, like you had goofy ass um, <clears throat> uh, tag teams like like uh, Scotty Too Hotty and and whoever the fuck Brian Christopher. I don't I just feel like everybody was having a good time and I feel like so many people take themselves so goddamn seriously nowadays and uh, that just it, you don't really watch wrestling and think these guys are having a really good time. Except yeah, for maybe the things. Usos. The Usos seems to be really enjoying themselves, but I don't know. It's still fucking self serious, and yeah, that's. I what still I think it's funny that out of the brood, the Edge and Christian were the ones who made it. Like Gangrel, the clear like leader of that group, <laughs> kind of fell by the wayside because everybody went, "Yo, a vampire! Fuck out of here!" There's actually a good discussion <laughs> about that. I forget. Oh, I forget what I was watching when they were really talking about that. But they're like, "Yeah, they kind of because they kind of put them together to both help Gangrel and and help elevate those two and Edge and Christian." But then the literally Andrew, they elevated them on a on a thing <laughs> <laughs> exactly around fire, fire, right? And yep. but they li- <laughs> but but people started cheering them more, and then Gangrel got pushed back. Actually, it was one of the Legends Roundtable when they were talking about that and then they brought up the point that he was doing porn or something for a moment i love the legends oh. tables because they're completely no holds oh, barred oh porn oh yeah no no he, he, was, no. Making porn he was directing while. wasn't he no oh he's in it that's not <laughs> no. that's not cool that's not yeah right. gang, gang girl I'm, is making uh, like vampire out, but i'm also kind of curious <laughs> yeah, yeah so the hardies and right uh edge and christian were and kank were one faction not not all together. No. Not not at the same time. Where the, oh, the Hardys came later. That's right. The, no, I think the Hardys came first, left, and then Edge and Christian, or maybe the other way around. I, you know what? No, I think it is. Edge and Christian. It is the other first. way around. Yeah, yeah. They split off and then they picked up the Hardys. So yeah, and that like that led to them fighting, but then they just like like because the, the first uh, either ladder match or I think his first ladder match was for the Terry Runnels services and contract and money. Oh, yeah. But then you yeah. forget about that because they just elevated what? beyond the brood and beyond that, beyond the gimmicks basically, and just became what they became. And it was, it was, it was, it was amazing to watch back then. I remember. So awesome. More email, sir. We do have more from Dustin, the never ending email. Kidding. Thank you, Dustin, for writing. So yeah, many only nice because, things. only because of our answers. <laughs> Yes. Uh, personally, I feel one of the better things about that time was that the fact that all the titles on the show had storylines revolving around wrestlers attempting to acquire said title and the matches for said belts. That's something I wish would come back. Yeah. That's all for me, guys. If you didn't get a chance, Lockdown was a solid pay-per-view with some quality matches. Yes, there were plenty of cluster-fucked, overbooked moments, as expected from TNA. 
but the Gunner Storm, Gail Kim Rain, and Bad Influence and Saban Wrestle One matches were all generally greatly entertaining for me. Regards, Dustin. I'll also like to point out that as part of that Wrestle One, uh, that was the great Muda was there. Yes, Muda was Muda yes. locking people. You know, that was a lot of the matches on that card were wrestling fans matches. Uh-huh. Like hardcore, like indie wrestling fans matches, I think. Um, and I think it was a pretty good show. I don't think it's a thirty dollar worthwhile show or forty dollars. No, I think no. I saw it on YouTube. What? No. What? <laughs> it wasn't a thirty. Like you said, it wasn't a thirty dollar show. Not on board. I mean, I, I would, I would, I would go on to say that the match of the night was Gunner and Storm. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't understand anything going on and i watched impact from the start of this i I watch impact i watch this (laughs) stuff and then when i i was excited for it Mm -hmm. and then when i watched it like i said in in on the uh after show it left a sour taste in my mouth because it didn't lead to shit yeah yeah nothing i know like i i won i i did like the wrestling some of the wrestling, some of the storytelling, but some isn't going to cut it when you're trying to produce an awesome wrestling match when you're at a wrestling pay per view, and you're trying to make people depart with forty dollars a pop. Yes, that's that's exactly. There's no resolution. They're like, so why no. you build up to build up to the next episode of Impact, and I, and that's a problem we had when you had twelve pay per views. But that's inexcusable when you have three. Like he he brought uh, I think either you or you, you brought up the Sam Shaw and uh, Anderson match. Mm-hmm. It was good. It was a good story. Yeah, but it was horribly done. It was horribly done by two guys. Well, by by Sam Shaw, whose gimmick is unique in its own way. But to have Anderson in that being a douchebag about it isn't the guy you have to go to. Isn't yep. the guy who's the protector of every female right. It shouldn't be Anderson. It should be somebody else, and it should be a good match. Mm-hmm. And it should have a payoff in that end. Exactly. I drew you a picture, though. <laughs> all right we got another email uh actually a couple emails first let's go to the visual aid ones uh chachi has been actually uh, again sending us pictures uh stuff he's gone uh, uh come across uh doing the wb network stuff first of all this one is actually uh a sign he saw wrestlemania uh 17 oh he's watching the raw before wrestlemania 17 uh the one where shane buys wcw from under vince uh whom have a match against each other at WrestleMania. i saw, watched a little bit of that today actually in the background uh don't feel bad shane my dad regretted my birth too is the mm. sign yeah there you go and he's got another one for us um <laughs> this is this is kind of funny uh normally i send screen caps of signs and I'll prep it here. Uh, of signs I find while uh, crushing the WWE Network, however, cruising, I'm sorry, the WWE Network. Uh, however, uh, this could not be passed up. Dude taking a picture with a MacBook yeah. at a live WWE show. Yeah, I was watching, I was on NXT. <laughs> and I, we, we were watching it live. And Do we have a, I do saw, we have a picture of this? Yes, yes we, we, we got the picture, yeah. And we saw the keyboard illuminating on the on the <laughs> on the floor on the like the where the keyboard was, and we were just looking at it like, what is this idiot doing? He's having the camera pointing at the at the crowd away from the like, away from everything happening, and it was just awkward to see. That no 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 that's photo booth. <laughs> yeah. You that, are doing exactly it wrong. What is what's happening, sir? He's sir. Pointing let me, the camera. Let me, let He's me pointing in, his entire. Invite you to the camera computer. section of your local Best Buy, where you can spend eight hundred dollars less than you paid for that MacBook. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> well, you have to. I would. Why? Why would you do? Who would allow this to happen? What security <laughs> guy went? What All right, security sir. You have said, okay, uh, go ahead some signs you, here. Signs okay, here. You have a full fucking first, MacBook. Sir. What do you need your MacBook for? <laughs> Like, yeah. Did anybody How else am I question take pictures, Probably man. not. I'm gonna fucking take pictures, man. All right, all right. Go ahead. Just gonna take it inside. And so if he said, "I'm here to take pictures," I would literally look at him and go, 
you're an idiot. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> we got one more email here before the break. Uh, greetings, Mayhemers, from uh, Mad Mike. Oh, He's off for the night and wanted to get his two cents in. Okay, just a few brief things about wrestling this week. Brian's Occupy Raw. I'm sorry. Hashtag. Or wait, wait. Hashtag uh, Occupy Raw uh, segment was amazing. But now that we are most likely getting him in the title match, Remember that anything can happen from the that point. Uh, it's weird that Punk is making his TV return on Talking Dead. <coughs> no, I don't think so. He's got a relationship no. with Nerdist, and Chris Jericho has a relationship outside of WWE with Nerdist. I think uh, it, it's fine, and he's probably making up for having to blow off the midnight at midnight appearance for whatever reason. <coughs> Sam Shaw pulling Christy into the cage was the best spot from a wrestling match this past week. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Um, Adam Rose's entourage is better than Daniel Bryan's. Agreed. Also yes. includes a bunch of old w- IWC guys. Uh, well, we should touch on Adam Rose later, shouldn't we? Um, woo! Woo! Uh, if Abyss comes out in a suit on this week's Impact, I quit. Um, no, no, he won't. I'm, you know, I'm with you guys on Abyss. It's, it's been so well laid out, and I don't. It they, was. So they better good. have a good explanation for this. Uh, uh, this this turn that he starts helping out uh, Magnus randomly. Um, I was, I feel like like the Dixie Card administration has spread their cards out too thin between the two main matches. You know, it's like, well, if you had a bis in the last one, this wouldn't have happened, right? Um I still don't understand why EC3 wasn't a special wasn't the special referee. Agreed. Especially since mm. he didn't get uh well, he got knocked out by Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's still looking good, not weird like Batista does compared to before. Uh yeah, still Bobby shouldn't be on the show. My own addition. I wish I I I'm sorry, what was that LB? Bobby Lashley was fourteen when we saw him last. He hasn't had time to age. That is true. <coughs> Ish. Um Is he is he kinda like a is he kinda like like a a Puerto Rican little league player where they're just like, he's 14. It's like, no, he's yes. not. He's nine. They just no, he's 17 all the way game. around. But, um, I wish we could have one man from every WrestleMania in the battle Royal with the 30th guy being NXT or making his WrestleMania debut. Sammy. Zane. That would be awesome. Let's do Sammy Zayn. That would be awesome. Uh, what is Willow? We're still asking that. Uh, more Jeff Hardy in a mask. More neglected oh, champion. More neglected championship. The U.S. belt or the X division belt? Isn't Austin Aries the champ? And he was in the main event. X division belt because it's on TNA. Yes. Yeah. Also true. That. Renee Young is lovely and all, but she needs to not geek out as much in front of Hogan. Ah, oh, come on. It's 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 nice. Oh, it's Hulk Hogan. It's nice. And you Listen, can, Cena saying, geeked out in front of in front of Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. Like, saying, Edge geeked me. out when he won the tag team belt with Hogan. So, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Cena's you know smile what? when Hogan's doing the the ear thing that was real. That was eight year old going. I'm in the ring with Hulk Hogan and he's doing the thing like right in front of me and he wants me to do it with him. Like, I would lose my damn mind. Hulk Hogan is a horrible human being, but I would lose my ever-loving mind if Hulk Hogan went, you need to come in the ring with me, and we're going to do the thing, brother. And I'm like, yes, I am. I'm in that <laughs> ring. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. A white alchemist. You know what? I, noticed, I noticed something on Raw last night uh, about that, about John Cena and, and uh, Hulk Hogan. And, you know, they're so similar. Of course, John Cena is freaking out because, you know, Hulk Hogan's what he wants to be, you know? And I thought about that, and uh, but the Bray Wyatt promo, he says a line that was something along the lines of uh, Hogan's present is seen as future. Yep. Which oh, wow. basically he's basically saying that Hulk Hogan's a broken down piece of shit, and so and John Cena's headed that way. I feel like since Bray Wyatt's the language he uses in his promos are very strange. And uh, it's like very non-traditional. He can get away with saying whatever the fuck he wants with no repercussions, <laughs> mm-hmm. because yeah. he said he said some stuff. And I thought if anybody else said that, they would have fucking just got fired or stepped on somebody's toes. And I do understand. Off. I was reading somewhere that that he write he does write his own promos. God, he has to. Nobody can write something <laughs> like that for you. Um, and but he does uh, run them past like WWE oh, creative or something. So mm-hmm. so I mean, it's 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 doing a pass, you know. Um, but do they understand it? <laughs> that's no. the catch i don't think there's, i don't think they look closely enough and get it enough and he can just get away with stuff there was another line that he would that he threw out there uh, it was the, in the first promo i tweeted it this morning which was 
Take your vitamins, say your prayers to the virtues of hustle, loyalty, and respect. Hope is gone. Hope is dead. And I was like, this is the greatest. And then he dropped that. Cena's curse, Hogan's present is Cena's future. And I went, he is just really nailing everything right now. Have you yep. noticed? I, he's done this. I think he did this on SmackDown and Raw. But he gets into this like like mocking childhood childlike giddiness in the middle of his promos making fun of whatever he's talking about and it's mm -hmm. even creepier because mm -hmm. he's doing it in that southern twang that you see people with like at deliverance say. yeah it's the best it is i think it's the best character i think this is going to be if given enough time and attention and respect and and development i i feel like break wait Ray Wyatt, Ray Wyatt could Wyatt. be another Undertaker, long-lasting, holy shit character, if treated correctly. Mm -hmm. like, like, I, uh, I feel I, I, like I, if he's writing that stuff, he's smart enough. Sorry, AJ. No, it's fine. The, the, I, I, was follow, I follow uh, Stephen Godfrey, who used to work for TNA uh, and now writes as a college football writer for SB Nation. Um, and he wrote the other day, he was talking about Bray Wyatt, and he's like, I don't understand why he was at Troy playing football. Troy is a very, very tiny little school in Tennessee. Um, and he's like, I don't get why he was a lineman at Troy. He's 6'3", 300 some pounds, and he's moving like a damn cornerback out there. I really don't get why he was at Troy. <laughs> like his natural athletic abilities are kind of amazing. Um, when you think about how large he is. And the, the, the crazy part walk. is... is the, the, the other crazy part is that he's the smallest one in the Wyatt family. Mm -hmm. Like Rowan and Harper are bigger and he's the mm -hmm. smallest one. And he's six something, 300 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times when they put him in a match, like I, I keep thinking this was seen it like he seems like the weakest link, but he, he's not really a weak <laughs> link in the long run. I mean, just look at his matches with Daniel Bryan, make him look vicious. It's all hell. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So, all right, with that guys, let's go to the break. Of course, you know, uh, the support of the show. We, we also, uh, have affiliations with friends in the international wrestling cartel. And, uh, let's go check out a little bit from, uh, their last, last, the last DVD release for a new era, including Luke Gallows of the, I was watching some straight edge society at WrestleMania 25, 26, <laughs> actually, uh sunday night and it was uh kind of cool to see him after seeing him in the ring with dalton castle a couple weeks ago and of course al snow who i saw arguing with people on tna and that wasn't as quite as exciting uh but go check out this little bit of music from basic sickness and we'll be right back with remember one Hey guys, welcome back. Go check that out. Uh, IWC is a new era, and of course, uh, being released very, very soon, new uh, DVDs from the Renegade Wrestling Alliance and IWC uh, from the past couple weeks, and some best ofs and all that kind of stuff. I'm here with the crew and with some different faces. We let them out of the Twitter jail, um, and uh, and uh, because we're ready for that segment. Remember when? Remember when? I'm gonna be remembered when. Do you really want to remember, remember when, remember when? Uh, of course, this week we're going to look back on the worst characters in wrestling. I mean, of course, there's the usual, there's the Mantars, there's the Shockmasters, but I think we're going to dig deep uh, on, on this one. Uh, and, and somebody had one already, right? Uh, Bobby? Uh, I do. Was that you? Make sure nobody else takes yours, I think, right? Okay, I'm going to go with the original MVP, Abe Knuckleball Schwartz, <laughs> who came out. Good. This was his entire gimmick. He came out, picketed when the MLB was on strike, hmm. and then was never heard from again. <laughs> <laughs> his entire gimmick was holding up a sign and then never being heard from again. 
Used to, but he had he had cool face paint. Used to great effectiveness. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Um, Bodiggity, you got one. I'm gonna dig deep. I'm gonna dig real deep here. I'm gonna take you back to about 1997, 1998 WCW. Man who had lasers as part of his intro, a, a character <laughs> that was created, I believe, <laughs> I believe no. that was created to capitalize on the Mortal Kombat movies. Yep. Oh, maybe. Yeah. And they really just said, you know what, let's take one of the characters from W from from Mortal Kombat. But let's take his mask off and make him a white guy. <laughs> I'm talking about Glacier. He had a mask. He had a mask. He had a mask. And he then he ripped it too. off. I had one of those masks too because it was one of those like sp- it was one of those like neoprene ski masks. Mm-hmm. And so, any t- by the way, I will say this: and to, to WCW's credit, every time I've ever worn one of those, I always rip it off real fast when I'm done. <laughs> was that was that around the time that the SARS outbreak happened? No, oh, I don't. Maybe think he so. was. Maybe no, he was a precursor to that. Far, far too early. Yeah. For that one. yeah. <laughs> no, Glacier. Glacier is one of the worst gimmicks ever because he had like ninja moves. But then, like, you would watch him wrestle, and he didn't have ninja moves. He only had ninja moves for his intro. <laughs> I, you know, I, and I disagree, because I, I enjoyed Glacier. But, of course, I was also a huge fan of Mortal Kombat. And I believe I was watching the Mortal Kombat show that came on right after Nitro. Oh, that show. Yeah. Oh. It was not a good show. Plus, oh. they named him after the biggest, slowest thing in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought you about only that see one. the yeah. tip of, but there's so much more deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Blows of blood runs cold. Uh, Riz, how about you? Um, I just remember watching old WCW and remembering good old OK. Oh no! Um, oh no! Oh, no. Um, yeah, the worst. I'm talking about that. It, it, it was a good concept. Until he made fun of Bell's palsy, yeah, like that's that it, 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 it didn't work at all. I mean, he and he was a horrible imitator of Jr. Bar none, but just to have him making fun of uh, some weird ass disease, uh, a disease like that, yeah. Just killed everything. And somebody like legitimately has a problem with, you know? I mean, that's yeah. that's tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, and an honorable mention to David Arquette. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Chachi was looking for that today. I think he was like searching David Arquette in the in the in the in the database on there. Why? So, Why I, was I, he searching I, for that? Hey, he wanted to see, figure out what which one was the three tiered cage where he won the belt. So, oh. um, <laughs> like Nitro? We, by the way, which one was that? Because I actually do want to go it back was and watch that match. Slambery ninety nine. I think we settled on. Oh. So try that one, or just search David Arquette on the WWE Network. And it'll come up. Oh, fair enough. So there you go. Uh, what about you, Mister uh, Wheels? Uh huh. I I caught that. Almost caught what you just said. Uh, honestly, I'm going to go with uh, AJ on the other end of that spectrum of glacier. I'm going to go with Mortis. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I mean, okay. Let's go for another extreme of Mortal Kombat. Let's go with a green guy against him. So yeah. That's my choice. And you know what? I came up with there was some canyon, I, I random WCW pay per view. Like he was a jobber, mm-hmm. like as Chris Canyon beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't re- I didn't realize that. So, but I also didn't watch like Worldwide and Saturday Night and that kind of stuff. Did so. they give him Green Mist to spit, Mortis? I feel like they might have. I do feel like they I might. I vaguely have. remember something green. Yeah, I don't um, remember like honestly. Other thing I learned when I was looking up Hog Wild to suggest the Chachi, I didn't re- I didn't re- realize they did a whole another eight matches at that event to play on WCW Saturday Night. <laughs> Holy crap! Um, and they sound like the worst matches possible. So they had to sit through eight of those crap fests before they got to the normal crap fest. Um, anyways, uh, how about you, LB? Well, I originally I was going to go with Man Mountain Rock, but. Then something occurred to me that was way worse and made a whole lot less sense than a fat man who plays guitar in a uh, in a tie dye jumpsuit. And my choice is uh, 
Vince Russo, except I'm a wrestler now. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember that? Oh, okay. I remember like that. when he came back that last time, right? No, in WCW, when he was like, I'm a wrestler now. Oh, I've got a concussion, so I'm going to wrestle wearing football pads and a helmet. And what the oh, fuck God, was that I about? I do remember that. Oh, mm. that was awful. Yeah. I, he just, I was just, I wanted to be on television, and I'm booking the thing. So, fuck. That's the crazy shit that Vince Russo, that everybody forgets. Vince Russo took away a match spot for somebody who probably deserved it to run around in football pads in the ring like an idiot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wow. What about you, Sorg? Fuck Vince Russo. Um, I, you can't, uh, delving through the WCW that I had never experienced in the mid-90s, uh, realizing the horrible, horrible characters, and there's a whole list of them, most of them in the Dungeon of Doom, but then there's some that, it, it seemed like, at least in two instances, there's a case where random good guy character to help out Hulk Hogan. Okay. Um, seems like a role that came up a lot and make less sense than Bully Ray at, at, and his turn at lockdown. Um, in the case that I'm thinking about now, it I can't even remember what show it was. I want to say it's probably Uncensored or something. Um, and I know it wasn't World War III. Well, it could have been World War III, actually. I don't even know. Um, but there was a guy, and I remember him later, like, jobbing on, like, Nitro and, and Saturday Nights when I started watching a little later. Uh, but The Renegade... Uh, and the, the renegade, <laughs> yeah, the renegade was basically the ultimate warrior, and I think they even played it up as he was like the ultimate alliance or something like that. Maybe they were trying to get warrior and it didn't come through, so they got this guy, and he was painted. He looked like he looked like a thrift store ultimate warrior. Um, yep. which he's the kind of figure you'd get at Dollar Tree. <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. You don't have the warrior, you have the renegade. He is a Dollar Tree action figure. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just... Oh, he's world te- he was world television champion for one year. For a, for a whole year? Wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Let's see here. It says from 95 to 96. I don't know. Oh, I, yeah, I got, you know, holidays and such, I guess. The <laughs> holidays. <laughs> There's a, there's a weekend time. You got the whole from, belt. It was from June 18th, 1995 to September 17th, 1996. That's God messed bless. up. That is a really long run. That is messed up. Took it from Paul Orndorff. Or, Paul Orndorff. Mr. To, Wonderful. Uh, wow. Yeah, Mr. Wonderful lost it to Diamond Dallas Page. Mm. Wow. What the fuck? Wow. <laughs> With that, me, uh, tell us me. Uh, your oh, crap. Tell us your <laughs> worst wrestlers of all time. Your favorites, your dislikes, the ones you love to say what, um, <laughs> and all that say kind of stuff what? on the Facebook, on the Twitter's Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, Mayhem, uh, Mayhem at Mayhem Show, uh, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Good time. I'm sorry, I'm, I can't type and talk at the Mayhem. same time. I need I need a so, producer on this show. Jeez. <laughs> um, but and you can help us get a producer on that show by all the wonderful ways you can help supporting and, and put the clothes on your back. Help yourself keep warm in this warming spring. What? It's too late. What the fuck is happening right, right now? ProWrestlingTees.com is happening in Lunchbox. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. You can check out the great merchandise designs by the great Alex Cars. Joining us in California, his great designs, AlexCarsDesigns.com, by the way. The Good Times, a Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt. The Property of Mayhem. Somebody just picked that up to wear to uh, Raw and uh, coming up in Brooklyn, I understand. Uh, the And, of course, the classic WMS shirt. And... Uh, if you go check out ProWrestlingTees.com, you can check out um, all kinds, all kinds of things, including uh, uh, shirts by friends of the show like Zima Ion um, and uh, a Blue Meanie uh, who's been on the show, uh, Chris Hero, uh, uh, Zach Gowan's on here, all kinds of people. So go check that out, ProWrestlingTees.com. Throw one for your favorite indie wrestler. Throw one in for us at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. So, um, and with that, uh, so, guys, Occupy, Occupy Raw. 
amazing. <laughs> Again, yeah. this has been the first. This this has been a two week experiment. It has been. It, no, no, here, no, no, no. It has been that they were seeing if there was that movement going on in in wherever the fuck they had it, Chicago last week. <laughs> and then they saw what they were doing. And I, I saw this on a meme once. They saw what they were doing and then said, hey, we can do that, but we can do it better. Mm-hmm. And they did. Well, no, I think what happened was that they, they hijacked the hijack raw. And then somewhere during the course of that week, somebody's like, this reminds me of another movement of Occupy Wall Street. Remember when that was a big deal? Mm-hmm. Hey, we could do something like that. Um, uh, the fans pouring into the ring. Uh, I I can't imagine how that worked. awkwardly hugging Daniel Bryan. Oh, <laughs> that guy, Seven times. That really, freight that train guy. was on TV. <laughs> that was not exactly. a freight train. That was more that was freight kind of train. Like, that I'm going to hug you with my smooth belly. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. But at first, when it, when, it, when it all started to happen, like, all of us were like, oh, no, what are they doing? No, no. And then, like... When Triple H came out and then all that stuff went down, it was like, yes, yes. It was great. It was it, it was a great build. And this has been and, and this is the like the culmination of something we've been complaining that's been so slow since like SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think Mike on the after show last night or on the wrap up last night uh, was talking about, you know, the idea of this could keep going past Mania and maybe even conclude at SummerSlam where it started last year. I think that'll be, I, I, that could be fun. I, I, I'd like to see him win at Mania. I, I'd like to see, that seems to make sense to me. Um, but to the point where we now have Daniel Bryan practically is WrestleMania at this point. Yeah. He's, it's, it's Daniel Bryan versus Evolution. It kind of is. Actually, yeah, holy it really crap, is. it is. Oh my it God, is. it is. It's Daniel Bryan uh, versus Evolution. Wow. Without flair. Wow! I, you know what? I kind of want Flair to come out and get the get the like, because here's here's how this is gonna go. I think we're, they've telegraphed this a little too hard. Brian beats Triple H to get to the main event, right? So he beats the mini boss of Triple H. Mm-hmm. I called him M Bison earlier. Now he's just regular mini boss Triple H. <laughs> um, so Triple H comes out. He he comes out. They have their match. It's a good match. Brian gets the win, goes to the main event. Orton and Batista team up on Brian. Eventually, Brian starts to, once Orton and Batista have knocked Brian out for a little bit, they have their little match where they start pushing and shoving. They kind of go at each other for a little bit. Brian finally gets up, gets back up, starts going after it. Right as he's about to win the title, Flair comes out, pulls the referee, and the evolution thing is all back together again. Let's and let that blades happen. No Bring back Flair and let's go. Yeah, he blades while pulling the referee. <laughs> <out>. <laughs> and now you got your attitude there of blood. blood and for... everybody goes, why are you bleeding? <laughs> and they all no, stop. No, Even no. Orton and Batista and Brian all stop and go, Rick, why the fuck are you bleeding? <laughs> He's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Let me, allow Some me to present an alternate scenario. Go. So okay. they, they start WrestleMania with uh, Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. Triple H beats Daniel Bryan and says, I'm inserting myself into the championship match. He beats Randy Orton and Batista, becomes the WWE heavyweight champion. The next night on Raw, he comes out, lays both the titles in the ring, and shows us his asshole, and then leaves. <laughs> and that's, that's you know, that is that's Triple that's H's it. legacy forever. <laughs> an uncensored brown eye and the WWE Network. I do, but it will be censored. And the just, WWE Network. I'm talking about right. Network. <laughs> you know, you know good and well. You know what's the worst part about this is that's entirely plausible. <laughs> you know, I, I, like when you were walking all the way through, even just him showing his asshole on national television, I went, Yeah, yeah, well, that yeah, could happen. Yeah, yeah. That could totally yeah. happen. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> like, well, what I was thinking too. Somehow, I think Vince is going to come back for, at WrestleMania because the way Stephanie was acting last night, like she was acting like a spoiled brat that was handed everything to her, 
the way she she mentioned her grandfather, she didn't mention Vince. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She mentioned her grandfather and her great grandfather, and, and she said this was this has been mine since I was a child. You know. Yeah. I think Vince is gonna somehow come out and do something, and, and that's, maybe maybe show his ass. And too. that's what always happens. <laughs> I, I've, I've talked really. about this pattern before because you always you always have um, the the power figure go until it's at its most ridiculous height. And yep. that mm-hmm. seemed to be the culmination. And I could see Vince coming out next week or after, or you know, very close to Mania, or maybe stuff does go very sideways at Media, or maybe Triple H like flips out after he loses to Brian and does something holy crap, and then like Vince comes out the next night, and that's the new regime is Vince taking back control somehow, maybe behind somebody like Brian or something like that, because um, he did kind of fade out there. Which was or, or weird. how about the craziest scenario of Shane going? Did you guys forget about me? Yeah, yeah. I don't see Shane coming back. Let's all let's all get Shane off that train. Himself out Shane's of not bed. coming back. Shane's a successful human being that doesn't need to deal with <laughs> muscly men <laughs> rolling like around on television to get money. Let's be real Shane honest here. The hell is Shane McMahon doing? Wikipedia, tell me quickly. <laughs> LB, what were you saying? Man is an old fat guy now. Oh is man! He? Yeah, I said, so. I said uh, Triple H is more likely to give us a flash at his anus than Shane McMahon come back. <laughs> that's yeah, that, that's true too. Yeah, but here, so here's another. Plausible. Shane McMahon is the uh, principal executive officer and chairman of the board for a company called You On Demand. Mm-hmm. The hell is that? Riz, you were saying uh, another. I, I, I don't know why, but I see it more like one of those two mm-hmm. matches are going to be quick. Like he maybe Triple H goes in the ring, starts talking to somebody, turns back around, meets with a knee in the face, gets pinned. Yeah. Or small package. Okay. Or, mm-hmm. or, yeah. <laughs> or gets beat by Daniel Bryan's small, small package. Um, he literally gets pinned by a small pair of testicles. Yes. <laughs> just tea bags the shit out of him. Wow. <laughs> and it just goes into that match fresh. Because they're, they're, ba- cause they're probably going to go on the fact that he's going to be tired and he's not going to be a, a factor in this match. But He's a B-plus player. Mm-hmm. And I can see him taking out Triple H quick. That's just yep. me. It would appear that you on demand is like Netflix in China. Yeah, yeah. I knew he had something going on in China. It's yeah. if you go to the website, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. on Maxim. What? Anyways, that's what Do Shane McMahon something? is doing. He is currently doing large scale business shit Do in China and doesn't need to jump across wrestling rings with trash cans to like make money. It's fine. <laughs> He's got better things to do at this point. Coming up, who's watching Total Divas this Sunday, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no. All the momentum is gone. Is this is this where is this where Mad Mike steps up and does the thing nobody else wants to with the recaps? Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. I, I will be watching Once Upon a Time. I'm sorry. I'd rather watch that than Total Divas. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be watching Walking Dead. If it's on, if it's on the network, I'll put it on in the background while I'm working to catch up with it, but if, yeah, it, like, if it's not it. and I have to find it somewhere else mm-hmm. through other means, um, I'm not going to bother. That's why I don't watch TNA. Yeah, they said it's not going to be, it's not on the network yet. It's not on the it, network? It's still on that channel that it's TV on. Deal. Hmm. Which is weird because hmm. they called D- Total Divas as being a show on the network. It, that's mm-hmm. totally weird to me. They still Maybe eventually. They still have the listing page? No, I'm logged in. Okay, I can't see that stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, by the way, Fantastic Finishers is airing right now, and you'll be able to catch it after uh, tonight on uh, on the network. So, Macho Man is definitely one of them. That's good to see. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I determined. The, I, spoiler I, I, alert! Spoiler alert! I said he's one of them. I mean, come on, you kind of expected. Like, do you really expect Undertaker not to be in the um, Fantastic uh, Entrances countdown um, you from said last finishers. week? What? Well, well, that's the one from last week. I'm saying, for instance, I, the, the finishers one was really good. Yeah. Uh, well, really? What, what do you mean it was really good? Isn't it just airing tonight? 
No, I it was. It's been on for a while. That's you can watch not it, right. Bro. That's not right. Yeah, Completely you can watch it anytime you want to. Tuesdays. Yeah, you can. You You're can wrong. watch the. It's twenty four seven, Sork. <laughs> yeah. Not everything. Not everything. You don't have to wait for oh WWE's time frame. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I don't even know. Um, I don't know either. But we're shaping up WrestleMania. Uh, it, it, is it? Uh, you guys excited yet? I think. I think last night was the turnaround for it. Mm -hmm. For a lot of it, and and I think I'm more excited about this one than I was maybe last year's. Yeah, um, you were there. I don't, know about you. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm more excited for the uh, Rumble than I was for Money in the Bank. Really? Hmm. Because it could go any way possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't know what they're gonna do with it. You don't know if it's gonna be. Hey, we're gonna just have this and forget about it. Yeah. It's just gonna be a match. Mm -hmm. With guys in the match, and it's not going to be a gimmick. It's not going to be a gimmick match like uh, like they did with the Iron Sheik winning it one year. Uh, the Iron Sheik won because he couldn't go over the top rope. Yeah, yeah that was that's pretty, exactly his belly, his yeah. belly button just stuck out and prevented <laughs> going over the top rope. Um, and that's real, but. <laughs> It, it could go to the fact that maybe they're going to do like a Bad News Brown, Bret Hart thing. Or they could have just gone towards a heel winning it and bringing it out like Edge and Christian. Or something to the extent of that. Or so, they could have Big Show win it. I.e., look, a giant won Andre the Giant Memorial. Because nobody can eliminate a giant. I yeah. hope, I really hope Big Show isn't the obviously obvious winner here, but I feel like it's kind of set up for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I want to be something. wrong. So basically anything other than that happening will probably make me happy. N not that a slight against him, but just as a, you know, to me, it was like the, oh, obviously Big Show will win this, right? Right? So Big please have a great colleague. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah no, Kali. No, Kali. Hey, listen, Kali just became oh, a citizen. Let him win a goddamn match from time to time. <laughs> no, Kali, no, my ass. No, no. Kali has had his day. Come he on. He was world I think, goddamn. I think it's champion. interesting. You show him respect. What's that, LB? I think it's interesting that uh, we're talking about all these giants winning this match when when you have the Royal Rumble and like Big Show or Kali comes out, you're like, oh well, he's the big guy and they're going to do the big guy spot. Yeah. He's, there's no way he has a chance at winning. Yeah, but they totally have a chance at this. Hey, That's Big Show Stud won the one year. I can see yeah. Rusev possibly as a dark horse winning it. Could be. Oh yeah. Could be. I, I, hey, that would. If you're looking at like I, I could see this. Oh, he does this stand on a be, pedestal. Though. This needs to be. Yeah. Pretty much like the money in the bank that the person that wins this trophy gets elevated. Hey, you were talking about like somebody carrying that around. Could you see a uh, little what's her face meow meow uh, coming out <laughs> carrying that? And then <laughs> he walks. Meow, meow. He walks up the pedestal with the trophy. <laughs> it makes meow, sense. Meow. It Just makes meow, sense meow. so much. You leave her alone. Yeah, I mean, if anybody <laughs> watched like the like that round table when they did the giants thing, like. The big men, a lot of them made a lot of good wins. They weren't just talking about tall giants. They were talking about the big, bulky type guys. I mean, they said, hey, giants does not mean tall. It mm -hmm. could mean the big guys giants like the big the, fat uh, fucks. Uh, who, um, <laughs> the Funkodactyl type men. And, Brodus uh, Clay. The Funkodactyl yeah. type men? <laughs> yeah, I forgot Brodus Clay's name. Leave the me alone. big belly really? dancing Cameron, men? Cameron, it. Cameron is a giant. Yeah, Cameron is not fat. In all of our hearts. Cameron got a Cameron got a fatty, but she that doesn't make her fat. Old booty, but it's not, <laughs> like she's not a giant. No, not in the slightest. That's right. Like racist. the plays in the Cameron. Cameron Prince weighs four hundred uh, pounds. Cameron. She just knows how to dress. <laughs> it's like uh, it's uh, how you uh, carry it. Uh, it's how you carry it. I think. Uh, I think uh, you know. Giant. We teach Bobby F. J. Town a little bit of posture. And he can cover, he can uh, uh, cover the same uh, wardrobe there. It's like oh, a Futurama with okay, the, uh, pe the the belly button piercing. Mm -hmm. It shrinks, it shrinks mm -hmm. your fat. 
I wish that existed. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would pay money to see Bobby F J Town in a uh, Funkadac Funkadactyl's outfit. Doing the dance. He's got to do whatever he wants as long as he's in my house doing it. I'm gonna yell at the I'm gonna yell at the wardrobe lady for not covering my couch. <laughs> Wow, Bobby, no. Wow, Bobby, no. That's the wow. end of the show. So, <laughs> my cooch. So, oh. so. Oh, wait, did she say cookie? My cookie. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, it's cooch. <laughs> it is cooch. Can you, say, can you say cooch on the A network? I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. Oh, my God. What else is going gooch. on in wrestling, <laughs> guys? Because we got to talk about something else, please. <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk about the fact that Sign Guy was in the ring. Sign, oh, sign, sign guy. guy, Frank the Clown. Was this like the elite uh, fan club? Uh, no, there was no Frank the Clown. I, I Frank the Clown was not there. Sign Guy was. Brock Lesnar guy also not in the ring. Okay, no. Brock Lesnar guy. I mean, they had there. they so had no, a lot of. It, the, the problem the was that they did the overhead. Sh- so they they had like the. The hard camera shot kind of like <laughs> off to the left. Yeah. And so you could see, like, it looked amazing. It looked like they had filled the whole ring and they had filled the whole outside and they had formed this barrier between Triple H and, and Stephanie in the, in the ring. And then they would go to like this overhead shot looking back up at the stage and you're like, Oh, there's like five people on the other side of the ring, and yeah, the, just like the hanging rest out by the themselves. ring is empty. And why don't they have more people? They they like really buttoned it up up front, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did. They funny. did like the hard cam. They, scene, they, but... they did the TNA lockdown positioning. <laughs> yeah, they just got everybody on one side, and they were like, "Yeah, it looks so full, right?" <laughs> uh, I saw a funny comment from the uh, with leather uh, best and worst of Raw. Uh, that's written by a friend of the show, Brandon Stroud. Who was uh, uh, recently on the Indie Mayhem, Mayhem show, by the way. The number of, in front of the Indie Mayhem show, uh, the number of people in the ring, uh, in and around the ring at Raw was more than the number of people at Lockdown. Mm-hmm. Probably um, true. Probably true. Which is probably yeah. true. I, I, I thought it was creative. I thought it was something different. I thought it was a... a like a really great way to show the the people so the it was crowd it was. support for Brian. I thought it was I thought it was pretty great. So 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 I, I well, let me let me position this. I feel like this is this era's this generation's um, Steve Austin beer truck moment. Mm, yeah, uh, I yeah. you're overestimating. Am I overestimating? Really, really? Uh, is this you know, not you know, like? I know, I know. It, it's it's I something. I, I feel like everybody's going to remember the night because we talk about we we've talked about with Rob. Wow, that's a good night wrestling. But are you really going to remember it in a year? Um, this is one of those things where you you talk about like, what was some of the best Raw moments of 2014. Okay, like, hey, remember when Daniel Bryan brought everybody into the ring? Mm-hmm. They all were wearing the same shirt, and that one creepy black guy was there. Yeah. Hugging him the whole time. <laughs> I was gonna. I wasn't gonna say anything, but dude, he kept hugging. I don't yeah, understand why he had to hug. Hugging, so much. hugging guy is going to be, be the equivalent of us uh, 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 being excited at Vince swimming in the beer. Um, is this? I think I, they're you gonna know, I'm not gonna go full like beer, beer truck. truck like, but... can you go Zamboni lunchbox? Can I get the Zamboni Austin thing? I give you the Zamboni. I mean, it, right. but it, I mean, it's on that yeah. level. Like, like night that he poured cement in the car. Night that uh, uh, even like Kurt Angle came out with the milk truck. Milk truck, yeah. Night, night you the know, milk truck these is one of the greatest things ever, though. What's that? <laughs> the milk truck is one of the greatest things ever. It was, it was such a great was, callback a, it, to the beer truck. It was. But then he comes out with milk. It's just, <laughs> oh, God, milk is so sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever spilled milk and then had nothing to wipe it up with? And then exactly. not cried? It's so. It's it's the worst liquid, and they sprayed people with it. Like, <laughs> was that oh. also the night that him and Brock Lesnar had the milk drinking contest? Maybe, maybe. Did they have a? Did I that. miss a Kurt Angle Brock Lesnar gallon challenge? No, they just oh. like were drinking milk in the back. I think it was something like that. I don't know. Yeah, but but I think that's we don't get. I don't think we get moments like that as often <laughs> anymore. And no. and again, but again. 
I, we talk about the rabidness of the fan base back then. I and, and and watching the old Raws and then going back to now, I really think that we're coming back to that. Uh, we feel like that everything's been so bland and manufactured for so many years, and now there's something authentic happening that wasn't a planned thing. Because you can't look at like John Cena and Batista were a very meticulously molded, you know, WWE head guy kind of thing. Um, this is that again. You know, it feels like the Stone Cold thing because the fans are more making it happen than anything. Mm -hmm. And of course, mm -hmm. he's delivering in the ring, of course. Uh, but but it just feels so authentic and the crowd reaction is authentic. And seeing those giant crowds doing the yes moment, like just having that. You know, before it was just people just exploding when something happens, when Stone Cold comes out. But now it is this giant synchronized thing. And it looks amazing in person. And it looks amazing in big crowds. And I cannot wait to see what it looks like at WrestleMania. Uh, Amen yeah, like with, with the correct point here. Brian turning on Wyatt in the cage. Yeah. And that crowd losing its ever-loving mind. Yes. I, I mean, it, you're you're now to the point where... Every week, you're just that the start of his theme song hits that, and the entire crowd goes. <laughs> and by the way, yeah, that was always it, like the time. lamest theme song for this guy ever. Riz, you're trying to say something. What? You were trying to say something? I was. I thought yeah. you were. Maybe somebody I was else just was. nodding my head. Oh, oh loudly. I apparently. mean, he has oh. he has Ride of the Valkyries, a, a like rock version of Ride of the Valkyries. Look mm -hmm. it up, kids. It's on museums and Sarah, history. And Sarah Del Rey also <laughs> used to come museums. out to that. Sarah Del Rey used to come out to that. By the way, did the WWE really just hire her as a trainer? She's never going to wrestle? Mm -hmm. Yep, and same with Norman yep. Smiley. Well, Norman Smiley is an old dude. Norman How old is Sarah Del Rey? Well, let's let's look at it this way. Let's look at it this way. I we, We've had this discussion. I, I think they look at Sarah Del Rey and they don't see the remarkable diva <clears throat> in the realm of divas. And it's very unfortunate. A friend of the show, right. Sarah Del Rey. Uh, uh, so, but they do see her as she can do what she can do, and she can train people. Yeah, I and mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, like Dean Malenko is a trainer. You know, Arn Anderson is a trainer. I think oh the God. best people to have in there as trainers, right? That's true. And, but look at look at the people. Look at that DNXT wrestlers. They want to get them young. Yeah, mm -hmm. they get them very yeah. young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would love nothing more than Dean Malenko to teach me how to wrestle. That shit would be amazing. <laughs> I would learn all 1,000 holds. All of them. Rest. And then you'd have to active. go to Jericho to get the rest. rest. Yes, I would have to go to Jericho to get the other four. <laughs> <laughs> Armbar. Armbar. <clears throat> awesome. awesome. I didn't have that. But like, I would be going, okay, now how do I, how do I armbar? How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll like kick Dean you Malenko in the face taught for me everything. Yeah. Yeah. How do I arm bar? <laughs> mm. um, so, uh, I don't know if this is a topic for much discussion, but I saw my first WWE programming with Chris Benoit prominently featured today. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if any of you have come across that. How do you feel about that? Um, I was, it was weird. It was like I caught him on the intro, and then he was involved in a match with Kurt Angle, I think they were leading up to WrestleMania 17. I didn't realize that the buying WCW happened right before WrestleMania. Like, I felt like that was a January thing. Good huh. my, my internal timeline is all screwed up now. Yeah, I, I started watching the uh, last Nitro today. Yeah. Where Vince comes on at the very beginning and then Flair comes out. So Vince comes on at the beginning. He's like, I've got WCW on the palm of my hands. And then Flair comes out, and they they know it's the last Nitro. Like they announced that it's the last Nitro, and you could tell that everybody in like the back is just like, whatever. Let's have fun with this before we go full WWE mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. And they had a, I, if I remember correctly, that wasn't a terrible show. No, it was no, it, very. It, it seemed like it was a real fun show to watch because, like you said, everybody knew. All right, this is our last Nitro, so let's go out and have the blast. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm excited to see Nitro episodes on WWE Network. Yeah, I want to go back and watch so many old Nitro episodes. I want to get. It, I I would love to do nothing more than start a uh, like a WCW Nitro hangout. Just pick an episode and go. Mm. Um, we've talked about this is because there's so much old content. 
that you can just start picking things. Like you could just start watching old WWE ECW if you really wanted to. You know, and there's some people that do this. It, it actually, it's like a really good concept. And maybe we should talk about this a little bit off air seriously. But um, there's there's people that do this like like that. They will go through. They're watching. There's a nerdist one, Bobby. You you've mentioned before uh, where they've gone through every Bond film and done a podcast on. Yeah, uh, yeah. James uh, Bonding. Gene, yeah, James Bonding. Uh, Gene Rod- Roddenberry's uh, kid. I forget his name uh he actually has been going through the original series and he expects to he's going to then go through the next generation and the mm-hmm. movies and all the rest of it you know if he keeps going on it uh he says he wants to uh but he goes through it and and reviews those old episodes and tries to figure out what his dad meant you know by the episode <laughs> and, and and do they still hold up today in some of their moral things because <laughs> since it holds up uh i don't think you'd be able to go that There's deep a- with monday nitro I want to see a Ted Turner, uh, Tony Tony uh, Schiavone podcast. What were we thinking in WCW? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. But I love this idea. But you could do, you could do, you could do pay per views. You could do uh, uh, ECW. You can, you could do. Right now, we got Raws and SmackDown. Some old Raws and SmackDowns, like the first like ten ish episodes of Raw are up there, mm-hmm. and that's a really eye opening experience. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for Mad Mike in those uh, Hudson Civic Center episodes. By the way, um, saw a guy holding a teddy bear. I thought it was him, not him. Um, so I, I love watching the like world class championship wrestling ones. That, like I'm like the you know w- it's something like that. CCW. You know, yeah, I would love you to know do what th- you shouldn't watch a hard, <laughs> hardcore TV. I know, I know. W hardcore but, wrestling. But having never watched hardcore TV, have never watched WCCW, have never watched certain eras of WWF and WCW in the '90s. Like I would love to do fresh perspective sorts of things like that you know like like yeah. you know and especially as a contrast to people that maybe like like my wife watched we, we talked about this a few weeks ago i don't know if i brought this up on the show but it was a really cool situation where we were watching just random old stuff and she started talking about how her family watched wcw and whatever was on and back when it was at the tight end was on saturday it was on two mondays and thursdays and i think fridays like they watched whenever it was on period didn't matter what show it was. Insane. That was like the best family. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but like, it's brought us together. And I've known her for 15 years and we never talked about like that particular thing. And as into wrestling, I know both of us have been, you know, and that has never come up. I, it's, it's really cool that, that looking at some of this stuff, um, um, but and doing these pockets like i love this idea aj aj we seriously need to talk about this idea i don't know if i have the time to do it i would just love to <laughs> like i don't know if i could like sit down and really run something that like that a, that and could be a part-time show thing. stuff on the air but like yeah i don't know if i could dedicate like every wednesday night i'm gonna sit down and watch a two-hour nitro <laughs> yeah throw a three-hour pay-per-view or three something hour yeah. Nitros. yeah yeah and then the three-hour nitros listen i Nope. I don't Today have that we watched the first half of the Nitro from June seventeenth, nineteen ninety seven. Follow along, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or you do them every couple of weeks. Follow along in your books. There you go. There you go. Follow along. This Follow along. Nitro. You know, um, there will be a those, test afterwards. Those are hard to do too. I mean, like those are hard to do too because, like, then you're like, well, I want to watch it too, so I know what the heck they're talking about. But I don't know. Um, awesome. Well, on that note, guys, uh, let me know uh, what did you learn in wrestling this week. You got something, Bobby? Um, I learned that Damian Sandow should listen to authority. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. I. I wanted to see a know. match in that crowd. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to I see wanted, them move out of the way, but like not get out of the ring. I wanted, I want I want Sandow to go down there and just Goldberg everybody. I want to see him like get in and then they pick him up and crowd surf him back out. I think that would have been amazing. But probably oh, that would have been so much fun to watch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wheels, how about you? What'd you learn from wrestling this week? What did I learn from wrestling? I learned my God, if you do not shake each other's hand, Zeb Coulter will undress. <laughs> Oh, That's wow. You shake hands. <laughs> that was the best. His, and that was a frightening experience. His build up, because he, like, he did, like, the Wario, like, 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 build up the rage. <laughs> like, 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 Saiyan style. Like, redneck yeah. Saiyan style. It was amazing. 
Zeb Coulter is over 9,000. <laughs> You know what was sad? So I watch Raw on Hulu, and this is the crap that oh, makes me not want to watch Raw on Hulu. I didn't get that at all. No, you didn't. No, they they no. They, 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 they they cut that from Hulu. Yeah. They also cut the Divas match. Wow. And I'm now really sad to know that I, I apparently wasn't paying attention. They cut the uh, Shield and Rhodes match, too. Oh, no. Hmm. Oh, no. That's I'm, I got see, the Sheamus see, and That's Stan. why I love the network. Seamus and Christian. The problem is that that's not on the network. It's not on the network yet either. No. Like the new episodes aren't. We'll see. That might change after April. See what happens after April. Mm. I think, I think, I think they will get it. Maybe they'll cut out their Hulu deal and they'll just have it on their own network. If they cut out the Hulu deal and they have it on their own network. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then then cutting the cord. Here's how stringent they are. Okay. So, so if you're on Xfinity, you get live streams of several networks, including USA. Um, mm-hmm. but when it gets to WWE Raw, I learned this week, um, it says this program not available on, on, online. It's Time Warner it is. It is on Time Warner on Xfinity, mm-hmm. yeah, which I've, is really funny. I've, since I've watched it many times on Time Warner. On, on like your computer stream? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's usually how I watch it when we do the Hangouts. No, oh. but the difference is at Time Warner, you have to be in your house in order for it to work, right? Right. Yeah. I think and that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. That's, well, yeah, that's the same thing. Like, if you leave, if you connect, if like if you go on your phone or you go on your computer to Time Warner's website and try to watch TV, there's like ten channels that yeah. you get. Uh, BBC America is one of them, so you can watch that's Top nice. Gear. But that's nice. um, yeah, if you just if you're watching it like on your phone, if you're not in your house, you don't get it. So the idea is that you don't need to have you don't necessarily need to have a TV. You can just Does Time Warner your... have an ankle monitor on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it can tell when you're connected yeah, yeah, through. Can. Yeah, it can Blink tell when you're connected through your cable modem. Yeah, I, yeah, I know it's DirecTV. I was looking at my dad's too, and 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 uh, DirecTV. It, it it says you have to be on the same Wi-Fi as your box. So yep. yeah. Anyways, yeah, hey, hey AJ, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Let's not get into awesome cast territory. Yeah, I learned from uh, wrestling this week that. Um, I really, really, really enjoy when King wears terrible clothing. <laughs> oh, no. And this God, week was a special so case. Bad. So a King decided he was going to, like, King could have very easily, I mean, if he is as big in Memphis as he is, he probably could have gotten himself a knockoff golden tuxedo like Elvis used to wear, but instead said, you know what? Gave me the long sleeve t shirt version. <laughs> like, what? Like maybe he, okay. You know what I'm guessing happened? I'm guessing the dark match after Raw went off air was King in a match with Brian against I don't know who. Maybe Orton he, Batista. He lost but, to JBO and Cole. But really, King, that's the shirt you go with in your hometown. The fake gold tuxedo long sleeve T-shirt. You should be ashamed it's of it. yourself. It says I want to be other... formal, but he also likes the party. There you go. There you go. Exactly. Um, well, um, was there a dark just... match? Because normal, do they have they started showing the dark matches was. on the network? No. Like kind of, if they happened they, in the background yeah, of the pre-show, the post-show. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Did they, was there one last night? If you guys were watching, I don't recall there being one last night when we had it on while we we're doing our show. Uh, <laughs> but they did show some sort of scuffle that turned into a match the week before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe. Uh, um, also, the uh, average age of the wrestlers on Raw last night? 34. Huh. Mm. So in case you're wondering if they're going younger, going older, uh, the average age of the wrestlers on the show were 33.7 years. Yeah, but there was a big skew with some of the people that showed up last night. Not really. Between Hogan and Taker. No, 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 no. Uh, the wrestlers who actually wrestled matches. Oh, okay. 33.7 years. Okay, okay. Mm. So you got Cena and... Yeah, the, like the Very actual people on the show number. just weren't that old, as far as I'm concerned, but maybe Riz, I'm wrong. Riz, what did you learn? Did you just look that up? Yeah, it's on WrestlingData.com, your favorite site for getting uh, the world's <laughs> yeah. largest wrestling database. Oh. Well, I learned that... Uh, NXT now has my favorite wrestler of all time. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Adam Rose. Mm-hmm. Is just about 
all of the things that is a wrestler. Sorry, that's my dog. Oh, um, oh puppy dog. Hey, hey shh. <laughs> no, Thomas, shut up. We got to end the show. Damn. Yeah, we got to end the show here, dog. Um, he but wants to tell us what Adam, he knows. Adam Rose is one of the – and I'm already a Rose bud. This is, this is good so everybody knows that. Is, and the way he comes out to the ring is unlike anything I've ever seen. And he did that before the Yes Movement. So suck it. The most over superstar in the world right now. Exactly. Mm. LB, what'd you learn? No, I gotta take my dog out. I learned that the Basham brothers look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Worst security force ever. Yeah, well, that's no Why good. only two guys no. that night? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Memphis. Like you could indie, get shot. All the other local indie wrestlers yeah. are in the ring. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Can uh, Lunchbox? Can you quote sources on that? Because I saw Stroud say that same thing. Oh, no, I, can't. I was uh, making a joke. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just making sure. Just making name sure. your source. Hey, name we've talked source. about it before. With not with a person who's going to be on the show coming up next. I'll give. I'll oh, give. Right. I'll give. You know, credit to Brandon Stroud. That's fine. But uh, I did not read that. That's just a thing <laughs> I came up with. I, I. You know what? And I believe you continue I learned um I learned I learned that nobody stays retired uh thanks RWA uh <laughs> as I edited the last show last week uh mm-hmm. so yeah there was that there was that all right guys I think we got everybody there let us know what you learned you can hit us up at awesome cast no this is the wrong what, show what? at mayhem Whoa, show what? wrestling mayhem show on Facebook the Facebook group especially and Google plus um, and of course at you can Lord drop a line that email address at good, good times, times. Good times. Good what are you saying Riz <laughs> mayhem show no, just, just pointing out there so you just you just rizzed it up, as I've been told to oh, say now. all day long. Uh, Good times oh. at WrestlingMamShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And, of course, uh, uh, check us out. We're on uh, Roku, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, Google+, uh, YouTube, Blip TV, all that kind of stuff. You can join us here live, WrestlingMamShow.com. You don't need another link. We got all the links right there on the front page for you. You can join us at 9 all p.m. Eastern for this show, and you can join us at 11 p.m. for the Indie Mayhem Show and find out who that is. Uh, <coughs> an old friend of the show, Andrew Palace, is actually coming up next week on that show, so stay tuned for that. And we got another friend of Eamon uh, from down in Texas um, that's going to be joining us tonight, and uh, we're going to be getting ready for that, so stay tuned if you're on the live cast. Go check Check it out. It's on High Heart Radio. Hopefully the Mayhem Show will be, Wrestling Mayhem Show will be there soon. Thanks everybody. Have a week. Mayhem out. Have a week. <laughs> <laughs>